So thank you, Matt. Uh, welcome everybody to today's webinar on the newest subtitle C hazardous waste landfill, finding competitive options. Um, my name is Jim Dykeis. I'll be your moderator today. And we certainly appreciate you being with us and uh, dealing with this technical difficulty. We don't know what happened, but thanks for hanging in. Um, like you, we hope that we've turned the page on 2020 and we're anticipating the resumption of normal business later in this year and the growth that comes with it. I'll give a, a brief introduction of myself uh, before I introduce uh, our two excellent speakers who are gonna share their insight and experience into the solutions that Veolia offers remediation service providers. I started my career about 37 years ago with chemical waste management and held various sales and marketing and product line roles. Um, in those roles and responsibilities, I sold landfill and remediation. If anybody remembers the name NRAC, that was the big brand for waste management at the time. I also was the first product line manager for the stabilization plant that uh, we built back at the CID landfill in South Chicago, if some of you remember that. Um, Next, uh, I'd like to introduce Matt. Matt Stauber has over 31 years in the business, uh, starting with a large competitor, cutting his teeth like most of us with seven years in sales and operations. Uh, he then spent 19 years with American Environmental Services, or AES, uh, rising to chief operating officer, where he led a four-person firm doing a million dollars a year to become a 125 employee firm doing more than 30 million in revenue. He then moved to vice president of sales at Clean Earth when they purchased AES, where he headed all sales and customer service functions for the now $70 million firm. In those 22 years, Matt held various operation roles as well. Alcoa came calling when they decided to commercialize the Gum Spring facility. And that is how Matt eventually joined Veolia in January of last year. And we're very pleased to have Matt with us. Our other speaker this morning is gonna be Rob Wheatley. Uh, also with over 31 years in this business, also with a sterling resume. Um, after a few years starting out in the analytic laboratory space, he moved to the Environmental Quality Company, or EQ, which later became U.S. Ecology, where he served for over 24 years. He progressed from a sales territory to become vice president of sales, field, and industrial services of a firm doing more than $580 million per year. There he managed all lab pack, remediation, LTL, industrial services, <clears throat> and service centers. Before joining Violi about five years ago, as Senior Vice President of National Sales, Rob was Executive Vice President Sales and Marketing for ACV Environ, also known as Allstate Powerback, and Clean Venture Cycle Chem. So a few housekeeping comments. Um, Rob and Matt are gonna walk us through today's topic. We think we'll have about 10 minutes uh, at the end for questions. So we would like you to submit those at any point uh, using the chat function, and uh, we'd be happy to answer those at the end. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, and uh, keep your eye on your email box. We'll send some follow-up material um, later today. Our next webinar will be April 1st on the status of EPA's e-manifest system, and we will post registration on our webpage, www.violianorthamerica.com, um, very soon. Um, if we have any, difficult, any additional te technical difficulties, hopefully we won't, um, there may be a reset, and, but it should only take a moment, um, but trust us, we'll be right back. So first off, um, just to see how many folks we still have with us, um, I'd like to just run a little poll. Um, how ready are you to be over COVID-19? <laughs> Very somewhat, or this is just really to see how many folks are breathing. Here we go. I can't take the poll, Jim, but I'll speak up and say very, very, very. <laughs> How many people are anxious to get out of their houses? Yep. Well, so far, it does, this is, doesn't give me a count. Okay, we got 96. We got someone thinking 2% on the, on the four. Yeah, maybe someone thinks they want to just, it's nice working at the home, right? Um, don't want to get back to the office. All right, so it looks like we've got, uh, most of us are very, very ready and a few of us not quite so ready to give up the, the digs, uh, the home office digs. All right, um, well, thanks. I'll just end that poll for now and, and move on to the next slide. Uh, this will be our agenda. 
Um, some of you obviously know who Violi is. Many of you may not if you didn't know that there was a new landfill. So we've got just a little overview of uh, who we are as Violia, a global company. Uh, next, we tried to, with the three of us and our experience with remediation, tried to go, what is it that we think uh, this audience really needs? So Rob is going to kind of walk through that a little bit. And then sections three, four, and five will really be talking about uh, benefits that we think the facility brings you. Uh, Gum Springs is fully integrated, uh, meaning landfill, incineration, stabilization, other capabilities. Uh, it's very efficient in how we can receive and process waste due to its large size. And we think we're pretty easy to do business with, which we think is important on a project. And then we'll finish with uh, some questions at the end, um, seeing how much time we have left. So without uh, any further ado, we'd uh, like to go ahead and get started with Rob. All right. Thanks, Jim. And uh, you know, welcome, everybody. Uh, very, very excited to, to be able to talk to you today about Bill Peolia, as well as uh, our brand new, spanking new Peolia Gum Springs complex. So uh, pretty exciting. And um, as for Veolia, though, uh, a lot of people know Veolia, you know, certainly the people on the phone as a waste company. Uh, we're actually a pretty big company. Uh, we are the largest in the world, uh, world's largest environmental services company. So we're um, $30.4 billion and about 179,000 employees. Uh, we do Things uh, that we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk today about the Gum Springs. We're going to talk about our, our treatment and stabilization and, you know, their capabilities there. And we have about 46 of those types of plants around the world. And uh, we also uh, are going to talk today about landfill. And it uh, turns out we have about 15 hazardous waste landfills uh, across the world as well. And of course, uh, here in North America, um, 8,539 employees just in North America uh, to service uh, your needs. So um, next slide. So the, uh, the big thing here is, is Veolia is, is broken down uh, into water, energy, and waste. Uh, actually, if you go into France, for instance, uh, where our, our corporate corporate headquarters are, um, you will you'll probably find a lot of people that are uh, thinking about Veolia more in terms of water than, than in waste. And uh, here in North America, we, we have the same setup, uh, which is water, energy, and waste. So on the water side, we, uh, uh, again, the world's largest water uh, treatment company. We manage a lot of water, drinking water, uh, municipal water. Um, so really big into the water uh, here and around the world. On the waste side, uh, hazardous, non-hazardous waste, everything from uh, collection at uh, HHWs to remediation, uh, large soil projects like we're going to talk about today, um, and including management of waste to waste energy or off to cement kilns, uh, right up into our incinerators as well. We'll talk about some of that as well. And then finally, in the energy side, uh, energy efficiency, energy management, heating and cooling, uh, you know, energy networks, microgrids, uh, we do all of that. So uh, pretty diverse company. Uh, doing a lot of different things, but um, obviously water, energy, and waste are kind of the three buckets that we, we, we tend to put ourselves in. Next. Um, this is sort of the, the big slide for us. And, um, you know, this is what we're going to talk about today. And, and I'll, I'll probably talk about this uh, again at the end. But really, why are you here today? What are we trying to do? So we, we think at the end of the day, uh, we can provide... Um, the right combination of capabilities and services. Um, and we want to be your, your, uh, your landfill partner, your treatment services partner, your incineration partner. Um, so up in the, the left there, uh, we talk about competitiveness. We're going to talk about state taxes, uh, state taxes, how we don't have one in, in Arkansas. We're going to talk about uh, the fact that we have a lot of capacity and um, we have uh, subtitle C capacity that the uh, you know, we, we can offer at excellent rates. We're going to talk about the logistics and, and getting uh, uh, the material to our facility, which is very well located. And uh, all those things, uh, when you combine them together, make us very, very competitive. Efficiency, when we talk about rail, we talk about direct rail. We're going to talk about the history of the site. And then the fact that we're fully integrated. Um, you'll hear this theme a couple times where, you know, we've got a facility that has a subtitle C landfill. It has... Uh, great logistics, including the rail, um, and, and then of course uh, you've got 
uh, the incinerator and uh, you've got significant treatment capability. And then at the end of the day, you know, if you're easy to do business with, if uh, you can get an approval done, uh, if you like the people you do business with, you get the right price and you're feeling pretty good about the service, um, hopefully you'll, you'll feel good about uh, the service that Veolia gives you, which I think is number one in the industry. I think, uh, Matt, it's, uh, it's up to you. Yeah, well, welcome everybody. And apologize for the delays. Um, want to take you through the timeline um, of this facility. Uh, how did it get here? Where do we come from? How do we have a brand new hazardous waste landfill operating? Pretty exciting stuff. Um, so really, just to give you a brief background of this, uh, is this was an originally an aluminum smelter built in the 50s. Uh, producing aluminum, very simply, very large footprint, very large facility. Um, it had closed for some time, and Reynolds Metals repurposed this, faci this facility in 1992. And by repurposing it, uh, the KO88 waste came out, uh, was promulgated, and we had all this spent pot liner from the aluminum smelters, and they repurposed this facility to be North America's premier outlet for processing SPO. And we still do that today, believe it or not. Uh, except back in 92, there were probably 27 smelters in North America. I think we're down to about seven. Uh, processed SPL, spent pot liner that whole time. 2014, Alcoa made some minor modifications to get some extra revenue in and started to burn low BTU liquid. The real changes came starting in 2018 when Alcoa decided to invest in the facility and turn it into a full commercial hazardous waste facility which I've been lucky to be part of for the last two and a half years. Uh, really exciting times to bring this facility to the market. Uh, and Veolia obviously saw this as a very strategic acquisition and completed the purchase of this uh, end of January of 2020. Here's a map, as Rob had mentioned. Um, this is just the wayside of, of our footprint in, in the United States. Uh, it's hard to see some of the green dots there, but we do have a, a lot of the OSHA VPP sites, if you can see them. And we'll be distributing this so you'll have a better look. Uh, but if you look at all these, uh, these are all waste support offices or facilities or plants or 10 days. Um, and Rob, there's this big red star down there near where you're at in Texas. What's that? Yeah, well, um, that, that big red star is what we're talking about today. And you can see it's a... Uh, um, a spot that's a pretty good centralized location across uh, across the United States. So we're we're uh, we're looking at waste. Uh, we're we're doing well uh, managing waste from the West Coast. Uh, we're managing waste out of the Midwest, uh, certainly the Gulf Coast and Northeast. Um, one of the big keys and advantages again is the rail. So uh, being accessible rail by rail is a is a really big deal. Uh, makes it affordable, even though it may seem far away. It, uh, it is not as far away as you think when, uh, when you put it on a rail. Now, it doesn't all have to come by rail. Uh, and as you can see, boy, what a great location, uh, certainly on the trucking routes and locations and getting things uh, to our facility from uh, trucking lanes. Uh, it's a great location for that as well. But uh, the other thing I would point out here is that all these dots, uh, these are just uh, waste facilities. There's many, many more dots uh, uh, related to our, our energy and our, and our water groups. And so... There's the only people everywhere, and uh, we have a lot of uh, density on that map across the United States, well, across the world as well. Thanks, Rob. All right, now we got a, a lot of the uh, uh, the boilerplate stuff out. I know everyone's here to talk about this facility, so let's get at it, shall we? Um, this is a very large facility uh, for a waste facility. Uh, to give you an idea, we're in the middle of, we sit almost essentially in the middle of about 1,400 acres only about four miles off the highway. Um, to put a picture of, of how big uh, the facility is, we have over 10 acres that are under roof. So it's kind of hard from these pictures to get uh, perspective, but uh, everyone kind of knows what an acre of land is or several acres, but we have about 10 acres under roof to give you a pretty, pretty uh, dynamic picture. Um, we do have two rotary kilns uh, that are operating. Uh, they will talk about that a bit later. Uh, so what we have done in, in over the past two and a half years is taken a, a single source facility, taken one way stream and totally transformed it into, uh, quite frankly, a, a facility that I don't think exists anywhere uh, else with the capabilities. So 
just on one site, we're going to have commercial, uh, you know, uh, rotary kiln incineration. We have our own uh, landfill that is now commercialized. I mean, it's a subtitle C landfill, and we've added all the supporting uh, treatment uh, for stabilization, uh, multiple different treatment units to support that landfill. And, it, you know, it completes our cycle. Um, you know, Veolia has not been uh, in uh, or own a subtitle C hazardous waste landfill and had a huge spend with them. And we're able to now uh, own that asset. Uh, but one thing, I, I, Rob, if you could touch on, one of the things we want to make sure is landfills are last resort. Uh, Veolia is very proud of the amount of uh, waste we, we recycle. So I know, Rob, you can touch on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, as it comes down to remediation and, and big soil jobs, uh, you know, that it is what it is. And that's typically what a landfill is going to see or residual from maybe processes. But we're, we're very proud of the fact that uh, we, we try to go as high up in the value chain as we can. We like to reduce, reuse, recycle, uh, treat, then landfill. Uh, but at the end of the day, if we could do things like uh, recycle your solvents or uh, recycle your plastics or um, manage things uh, within a plant and our total waste management programs and try to you know, eliminate waste to begin with. Uh, those are all things that we do now very aggressively. And uh, a landfill is, is, is a thing that's necessary. It's part of what has to happen out there. But um, boy, we do a lot on the, on the treatment side and recycling side as well. Thanks, Rob. Uh, and just, just, just to reiterate, you know, we have on one location, I think this is important, and we'll talk details about the rail later, but uh, as Rob will, but all in one location, we have enormous rail capabilities. We have two rec uh, incinerators operating. We have a subtitle C landfill operating we'll talk about. We have stabilization capabilities all on one site, all open to commercial business, not a monofill, not a singular source for, the, for just the ash, the incinerator. So pretty unique in the in the country as far as uh, a facility. Again, we really want to focus on the landfill today, uh, but we do want to touch on our incineration. Uh, the two rotary kilns you kind of see in the background there. Uh, so let's uh, see if we can move these um, pictures here. Jim, maybe if you could move those pictures over so they can get a picture of the tank farm. Uh, they're about 240 foot long, nine foot in diameter. Um, they're low BTU incinerators. Uh, we really like controllers that are less than 5,000 BTUs. Uh, we are still processing the KO88 through there. A lot of liquids, high capacity for, for low BTU liquids and also low BTU solids through, through the facility as well. Um, and, and we do not uh, take Tosca or dioxin waste, but Rob, I know uh, we may have some other assets that can take care of that for you. Yeah, so uh, relatively new capabilities down in Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, we have been approved and we have taken now dioxin waste uh, at that site. So that's pretty unique for the United States for that facility. And uh, we are taking dioxin soils and do dioxin work uh, down in uh, the Port Arthur, Texas facility. Uh, we do have uh, other sites. Um, so of course we have the, you know, the two incinerators uh, that are at uh, Veolia Gum Springs, Arkansas. Uh, which we're talking about today a little bit. Um, but we also have, of course, the massive unit that's in Port Arthur, Texas, uh, which is fairly sizable, one of the largest in the country. And then we also uh, have three units located in Soge, Illinois, uh, two rotary hearth kilns or hearth kilns and one rotary unit um, as well. So uh, some significant incineration capacity here in the United States and around the world, actually. So uh, that Tosca thing is a pretty unique thing. Um, uh, the Tosca permit uh, to be able to burn that, and so is the dioxin waste permit in Port Arthur, Texas. Awesome, thanks, awesome. Rob. Thank you, Rob. And uh, as you can see, the picture now we got the pictures out of the way of us. Uh, the tank farm is uh, again full vegetation, uh, so all nitrogen blanket for, for low flams as well. So good on liquids incineration. Our hazardous waste landfill uh, designed uh, with all the strict criteria of a subtitle C landfill per the regulations with a multiple layer system. Uh, we have two cells that are currently permitted and uh, we're not even utilizing yet. We can utilize them starting tomorrow. That gives us an additional 1.2 million uh, cubic yards of capacity. So I know that's usually the first question somebody asks is, uh, what's the life of the landfill? Well, between this and our optimization plan and future expansion, uh, we, can we can comfortably say 
that, uh, or I can comfortably say that we have many, many hundreds of years and more years of capacity than, uh, unfortunately, any of us on this call will survive to see. Uh, so that's kind of kind of a neat to have that much capacity. Uh, one of the unique things we do with our leachate is it's a closed loop system. So we collect our leachate and we burn it through our, our wrecker incinerator. So really a unique facility, very exciting when you look at it all that way. Uh, complete closed loop uh, uh, on site for incineration and landfill and right back to the leachate collection. Yeah, Matt, that's a big deal uh, on the leachate side. Um, I, I don't know that everybody else burns their leachate, uh, which is what we do. Most people will will treat then discharge, um, obviously meeting any, any parameters for NPDES uh, down the road, but uh, that's, that's pretty good liability protection when you're uh, actually incinerating your leachate. Absolutely. Uh, as far as treatment capabilities for the landfill, this is uh, when Veolia purchased this uh, facility in, in February, their focus was solely on in putting the support structure in place so we could properly utilize uh, the landfill, which they have done. Uh, we've had uh, uh, great increases in, in treatment capabilities. So we're now able to take um, uh, met or materials that uh, require metal stabilization, whether they're listed or just characteristic, and we're able to treat those now uh, and render them to meet the LDR. So we've really ramped up our capabilities through several different units. And for some of you that I know probably some of you are on here, I've visited this facility in the past or have talked to us. And one of the crazy things that uh, we didn't have a year and a half ago uh, on this massive facility was a loading dock, if you could imagine. So uh, all that has been fixed, so uh, the facility is wide open for not only drums now that we couldn't take in the past, drums, totes, liquids. So when we're talking about treatment capabilities, please keep in mind that that's for bulk all the way down to pails and everything in between. Uh, we now have storage and uh, containment for all the different types of containers, which really has opened the facility up. So we are able to treat uh, liquids, solids, and sludges uh, uh, from drums to bulk to rail. In addition, we have been aggressive in, uh, in acquiring the technology and knowledge for the uh, micro and the macro encapsulation that we are now doing. Uh, we are able to uh, do wet oxidation as well. We do have shredding capabilities, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. And kind of one of the unique things, uh, Rob, I don't know, there's, I know there's a few places that have it, but we have a full T enclosure. Uh, which means we're turning the air over four times minimum an hour and collecting all the VOCs. So when we do any oxidation or any treatment, we are collecting all the VOCs uh, and, and being in compliance with the removal efficiencies. Yeah, that's a pretty nice uh, setup. I mean, uh, having the, the, that kind of air control on your tank uh, allows you to do some, some unique things, particularly with uh, some lower, lower level organics. So uh, we're, we have that capability. And uh, it also, you know, just, just makes it safer. Uh, to have that building within a building is a pretty nice, uh, unique feature. Yep, a good point. Uh, all of our treatment units, as, as Rob mentioned, are, you see these large buildings, but we actually create buildings within buildings for these treatment units. Uh, so it's e a lot easier for the dust collection and capture of the emissions. So uh, really well done. And uh, really in, in the two and a half years, it really in this industry, as everyone knows, this has been such a, a great success story and something so exciting to be part of because the amount of changes and in, in additions and bringing this facility from kind of an old uh, facility back to life, it, it's just been a really great experience for me. All right, thanks, Matt. Um, I'd like to just uh, jump in and give people a, a chance to take a quick poll here. Um, it should be up there in the last six months. Uh, this is just kind of a barometer of uh, business in the last little bit. Uh, how many bids have you uh, submitted recently? Zero to five, six to 10 or more than 10? All right, getting some answers here. Let it go for just a few moments and oh, more and more people are jumping in. Changing as we go. Well, Tim, let's hope it's all better than 2020, the year we want to forget, right? Yeah. Yeah, hard to believe it's been it's been about a year, hasn't it? 
to this. He's going to have to wear a mask on this phone call. So I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. I, this is a, this is a, next week will be the uh, last time I was down in Gum Springs. And um, I remember flying back on that Friday, and that's when they started canceling the sports seasons and everything just went crazy. It's just yeah. hard to believe that's next week already. Well, there you go. Um, I'll just end the poll. I think everybody's voted. And awesome. uh, so we got about 55% are in the zero to five, 23% in six to 10, and a good 21% have done more than 10. So that's great to hear. Awesome. Good All news. Right. Yeah, I'll throw this over to Rob now to talk about one of our biggest uh, uh, assets in, in, in that, we, that we think we own. And it, I just want to refer you back to that initial map that we said with the big red star. Uh, of why we can be so competitive. Certainly waste sometimes doesn't travel far. We all know that. But uh, on projects, uh, we have a, a unique setup here. And Rob, over to you. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Matt. And and uh, boy, this is probably the, the thing that really gets me excited when you start talking about larger remediations, and, you know, uh, unit trains and, and moving uh, some very large volumes of soil. Uh, we've got the uh, capacity, obviously. We've uh, but you know, what people don't realize probably until you go to the site and you go there and you see all of the rail and, and the rail car and all the, the, the amount of dedicated uh, rail line and spur um, right there off of the Union Pacific main line. So it's a class one railroad um, and we're right there, right off of the, off the class one, off of a spur. So pretty exciting that to have that kind of thing. So what does that mean to you? Really, it means we don't have a uh, drayage. In, in other other cases, you might have a twenty, twenty five dollar, thirty dollar a ton drayage uh, on top of your fees, right? And so that's a savings uh, because we, we won't charge you that. Uh, we don't need to, and we we take it right off of the rail, whether it's a intermodal box or if we're digging it out of a, a gondola, uh, we're taking it right to our our landfill or our treatment facility or our recra uh, hazardous waste incinerator right there on site. So it's part of the offloading process. Um, we do take rail tank cars. Uh, we take a lot of bulk rail tankers. You'll see that when you get to the site. Uh, we have a lot of intermodals, uh, a lot of KO88 pot liner uh, that we're, we're processing. Uh, we process uh, the majority of that uh, from the United States and, and even from Canada. And then uh, we're, we're dealing a lot with, with uh, gondola type of waste. And you can see from the picture there, we're, we're looking at uh, 65,000 pound Forklifts, uh, fantuzies, uh, I think is a word people like to use for that, uh, that lift intermodals and put them uh, in, into storage and in processing. And so uh, it's pretty good equipment. And, um, you know, again, the infrastructure that's there, that's been a part of maybe that historical aluminum processing facility is really what uh, gives us that huge advantage. So what does that mean to you? It means, hey, we can give you a pretty good pricing. And when that rail uh, comes to our facility, uh, we have efficiencies that maybe other people don't have, and we can translate that in terms of a price. Absolutely. And just a comment, as you can see in the picture, these are, uh, this is right on our site. And you see the the, the containers, uh, the SPL containers that are triple stacked there. Uh, that's actually part of our inventory. Uh, we can store well over 300 boxes in inventory. Uh, if we triple stack them closer to 600 uh, in just in inventory uh, that we'll talk about. So, Pretty exciting uh, to have this rail because it really does tie into a lot of our uh, of our bullet points, um, and we're very efficient at rail. This isn't a new thing for the facility. Uh, a lot of stuff's new, obviously, with all the changes. But the one thing that's not new is our mm -hmm. ability to to deal with rail. Uh, we've been doing this since 1992 uh, and received large volumes of the SPL from, quite frankly, all over the all over the country, including uh, north of Montreal up into Canada. So. We're, we're used to having rail and moving rail a long way. Just a little bit, he can see a better picture here of some of our liquid cars. Uh, our liquid cars come in, we can do uh, several things with them. We can put them in our tank farm, obviously. Uh, we also have the capabilities to, to direct burn from a, a rail car or from a tank truck uh, directly into our kiln. Uh, as I mentioned, lots of storage for roll-offs. Uh, we have added our drum storage that we talked about earlier, thank goodness. Uh, we actually have three loading docks now that we can unload drums. That's awesome. Uh, about 8,000 or so 55-gallon drum equivalents uh, for storage of drums and totes and so forth. As you can see, we have a large amount of rail on site, several different spurs and tracks that gets us at well over 30 cars at any one time. 
Uh, we have all the RECRA codes minus the F-listed dioxins. We do not have those. Uh, so we're going after RECRA. We are circular approved. Uh, we can certainly uh, take waste under the alternative treatment standards. And really what we wanted to just, if there's anything you remember um, today from our, from our presentation is that we really wanted to get through is we have a large appetite. We have a brand new subtitle C landfill uh, that now Veolia owns. So we now, we are a landfill company, which is very exciting. Um, and we just have uh, tremendous capabilities in the remediation projects. Where else could somebody put something on rail, go directly to a site, where it, it could be incinerated, it could be stabilized, it could be direct landfilled, all of the above at one location. Pretty unique, Rob. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, uh, pretty exciting. And when you talk about uh, the next slide, which we haven't gotten to yet, but uh, you know the efficiencies of you know the number of trucks that can come in per day, not just rail, and then all the things that we do, uh, I tell you, there's, there's no other site like it in the country. And we worked hard uh, in the last uh, year or so to, to do this and get it to this point. Uh, it's a beautiful site. I uh, would encourage you all to come see the site, come audit it. Uh, we're very, very proud of it. Uh, good compliance history. Uh, you'll find that uh, the site is, is fantastic and um, has so many capabilities, uh, pretty much a one-stop shop. Well said. Well said. So uh, we really like to do, uh, you know, we, Rob talked about easy doing business. Uh, we know, you know, our target, our target audience on here. Hey, if you have a large project, the last thing you need is, is difficulties. Uh, you need to move the waste. You need to move a lot of the waste and you need a process. You need an invoice and you don't need headaches. So uh, one of the big upgrades the last year has been uh, millions and millions of dollars invested in our laboratory. So all capabilities we can now handle on site. That's, that helps with a quick turnaround. Um, we can help you with profiles, most streams. And I, I will have one caveat here since I've been in this industry so long. If we get a completed waste profile that actually has all the information, we're able to move that very quickly for 24 to 48 hours. Some of them would come in blank for composition. Well, we may have to cook back and ask you a few questions. Um, Jim if, or, or Rob, if you can talk about the, the highest ranked customer service, how we do that, that would be great. Yeah, so uh, customer service to, to us is, is a really, really big deal. And um, if you know about NPS, so we had an NPS this year, a score of around 81. Uh, we, we go out to the market. We try to find out from our customers um, how we're doing. And, um, and we translate that into a, a well-known uh, metric, which is the NPS score. Uh, we, we know that we're one of the highest, if not the highest in the industry. And uh, we, we feel pretty good about that. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, every employee knows about and everybody uh, has to uh, work very, very hard at to make sure that we stay ranked number one in customer satisfaction in the country. So it's a big deal. So Rob, I'm gonna put you on the spot now. I'm, I'm using my, artist I'm, I'm, I'm artistic, my artistic ability here for everyone to see. What's that big red box there? That <laughs> ah, okay, there you go. Yeah, I like, I love whiteboards. That's awesome. You know, so, um, you know, I came from, from Michigan where there's a has waste landfill and there's a state tax there and it's a part of the deal. It's a part of what, uh, what you have to pay. Right. Um, and so same with, uh, Emile, Alabama, where there's another uh, subtitle C and, and one of the big advantages that we have economically is that we do not have a state tax. So we do not pay that $10 a ton fee for every ton of, of material coming into our landfill. So again, you're looking at the rail efficiency, hopefully helping saving some money there. Um, and then, you know, the state tax, no state tax that we're gonna have to charge it. Uh, so saving some money there. Uh, and then hopefully we, we get into uh, the cost of the cell itself. Again, we have a lot of capacity, so we're, we're gonna be aggressive on, on the pricing there as well. Absolutely, it all ties together when you, when you put this uh, and summarize so it. So where things are tough and you're trying to Yep, you have no state tax, you have no drayage, you have direct rail. Uh, we have, you know, enormous capacity. We should be able to offer a good package for any remediation, uh, small, large, and everywhere in between. Yep. So uh, a little repeat for this, but I, I do want to go. We can take a lot of different things uh, permit-wise, but we were really optimized for, for project wastes. Uh, incineration, very simply, soils. 
uh, for incineration, low BTU solids for incineration, uh, and low BTU liquids. We, we have um, a lot of volume uh, capacity for those. Uh, so we can handle large soil projects for incineration and low BTU solids. As far as treatment <laughs> in landfill, what we're targeting, obviously any hazardous soils that, that would fall under the alternative treatment standards or 10 times the LDR, uh, soils that would require metal stabilization. Uh, again, liquid sludges, solids, uh, we can do liquids uh, for solidification or stabilization or both. Uh, we can do elementary uh, neutralization of caustics, uh, inorganic alkaline liquid sludges, uh, whether they're uh, just corrosive or whether they do have metals as well. Um, and uh, a lot of portion is, you know, a lot of, lot of non-hazardous waste still ends up in a subtitle C as well. And uh, we really have a, a large appetite for our, our, our new micro process and our macro encapsulation as well. So really uh, able to provide you with a whole portfolio of, of treatment options for any remediation or demolition pro or, um, uh, project that projects that are out there. And I know Rob, you can take us through an example of one. Yeah, so uh, we thought we'd throw up a case study just to give you a sense for you know one of the projects we've recently done. It's a, a, a large utility on the East Coast. Um, so you know, a hundred year old lead contaminated brick building. Um, you know, and that's right up our alley, obviously, uh, something you might have to do some micro encapsulation with. And so uh, you've got to, you know, obviously mobilize or immobilize the lead uh, via micro encapsulation. Um, great part about this is it's, a, again, you know, basically with the things we just talked about, we were able to put it on a rail uh, in a very tight, small space. Uh, we were able to truck it out, put it on a, 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 a nearby rail spur, use ABC cars uh, out of New Jersey, I'll run that down to to Arkansas, where we used our our forklifts, and uh, went right to uh, our stabilization slash landfill. So, a uh, fairly large job um, went off without a hitch. Uh, processed it very effectively, very efficiently. And one of the things that I just wanted to, to throw out here is this greenhouse gas reduction. So, a lot of people are thinking about that. And gee, how do you how do you claim greenhouse gas uh, reductions of emissions? Uh, in this case, uh, you can do it with the rail. Uh, and in this case, equivalent of taking 37 cars off the road a year uh, by using rail instead of truck. So uh, we were able to, to, to save some, some uh, carbon dioxide uh, gas emissions uh, that would have otherwise been, been done through a truck. But the project went off great. Uh, everything went well, uh, had a lot of efficiencies there. The people on site were happy, the customer was happy, but that's just one example of the types of projects we can do. And, and certainly, you know, hopefully some of your projects uh, on the phone and you know, it doesn't have to be debris, it can be soil, it can be all kinds of things. And it doesn't have to be many, many boxes. It can be one box uh, or like I said uh, from Matt, it, it can take it a, in a truck or you can take a, a, a small drummer pail to us. We don't care, we're not, we're not picky. Yep, so all the, uh, all the drilling uh, mud, all the drilling muds, all the decon water and the drums that you do pre pre remediation all a uh, very good option for us down at Gum Springs. Yeah, so the next uh, slide, uh, this kind of goes back to the earlier slide that we had. <clears throat> so again, you know, right combination, and, and it's what Matt and I have been, been stressing this whole time. And again, we'll think we'll be really competitive for all the reasons we've been talking about, whether it's rail, state tax, uh, unit pricing, um, and, and uh, you know, just a list of logistics by themselves. Uh, fully integrated. So if you want to go to one facility, uh, one-stop shopping, uh, incineration, landfill, treatment, uh, you've got it all. And then uh, we have the services to go along with that. All those little dots you saw on the map, uh, we have a lot of service arms, a lot of uh, service capability out there in the marketplace uh, to deliver uh, that waste as well. And then efficiency. We, we just think that we're going to be more efficient at it than anybody else. Rail is a good option. Uh, you know, us being able to manage projects on a timely basis is gonna be a big deal. And uh, just, just being able to receive things and the large quantities that we've been talking about uh, for larger remediations, we, we can definitely do that. And we're just easy to do business with. Uh, I think the profiling is going to be easy. Uh, we think it's gonna be pretty fast uh, turnaround on the profiling. Uh, you know, uh, what I talked about with the, with the customer service, that is a big deal to us. We wanna make sure people are happy. Uh, we wanna make sure that they have a good experience with Veolia. So you tie all that together and we feel like we have that right combination of capabilities and service. 
Okay. Um, thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, Rob and Matt. Um, did have a few questions come in. Um, I, uh, an easy one, Matt. Uh, number 11 there is how many employees at Gum Springs? Uh, just under 100 right now. Okay. Um, also look at uh, number 10. I thought that was interesting. Um, maybe you can read it and then uh, spring in a cold one on you there. But uh, Oh, sure. No. Uh, can you take chlorinate away from your direct burn line or are you permanent limited uh, to the scrubber process limited? Uh, good question. Um, we can take, we, don't, we cannot take high levels of chlorinated through the direct burn line. Uh, we can take up to 3% uh, through the direct burn line uh, for chlorinated, but uh, if it doesn't need to be direct burned, it, it can be, we, you know, we obviously can blend with our tank farm as well. But there, there's not a, uh, the feed is, is how much we can actually burn. It's not what we can take in. Okay. Um, we also had a question um, that kind of go together. Maybe you can answer them. Um, a reconfirmation of can you take PCBs, uh, can you take asbestos, and can you ex take uh, PFAS, PFOS? Yeah, we get these questions a lot. Um, we are we will be exploring. We do not have a task permit. That, let's answer that first. Um, we will be exploring uh, options under the uh, PCB mega rule and the exemptions that some of our competitors use. Uh, currently that, that take PCB remediation soils but don't have a TOSCA permit, uh, that there is an exemption in the PCB mega rules that we will be investigating, probably taking part of. Um, we are not taking PFOS materials. Uh, that is a corporate decision um, because of the unknown treatability of it and how best or how it hasn't been really defined yet, uh, how, to, how to properly treat it. And at this time, we're not taking asbestos. That is something that is a short term and we will be uh, that is being addressed in, I'd say within a year, we will be able to take asbestos, but not right now. Hey, Matt, on the PFOS, uh, we do take that at uh, Port Arthur and uh, we do it for incineration. So we, we feel like that is the best option for that. Uh, the government, uh, I think, agrees with us, the DOD. Do. And one of the reasons that Port Arthur is uh, the only place that takes it is because they burn hotter. Uh, we have a TOSCA permit, which means we have to burn a little bit hotter to fully destroy those, those PCBs. And so because we do, uh, it meets some of the standards or thresholds that they've set for PFOS incineration. So uh, that's why we, we see a lot of PFOS waste. Yeah. Okay. Um, hot off the, the press here, we did have a question. How did you determine the greenhouse gas uh, reduction? I'll take that one. Um, Veolia has a tool. It's called GreenPath. Uh, very sophisticated. Um, and we just plugged in uh, the units. And of course, there's conversion factors for a diesel truck and a diesel freight train. And we plugged in the units, as I said, the number of tons, number of miles, number of uh, uh, cars, et cetera. And it, it calculated that. Um, very, very accurate. Uh, for instance, I think when I used a generic one off the web, uh, off the web for one of the railroads, it said there was like a 65% reduction. But when we ran it through our own, um, it was a 50% reduction. So it's... Uh, uh, the only tool. That's how we did uh, made that determination. Um, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, I don't know, Rob or uh, I think Matt, there's a few more questions. I can pick off. Yeah, I can pick off a few more that I that I see here. Um, do we own our own rail logistics and, and equipment or outsource? Uh, the answer to that is both. Uh, we do a lot of the logistics internally. Uh, all the SPL containers you see are ours. Uh, we do have a group uh, within our, our company that uh, does the rail logistics directly. Uh, it's a small group, but we also rely on, on others because uh, depending on the geography. So the uh, good question. Uh, the question is we, we do both on a, on a fairly recent or uh, um, routine basis. I saw the question on liability. If I can just uh, address that real quick too, Jim. Um, you know, we, we have uh, pollution Legal liability as part of our contract. When you sign an environmental services agreement with Veolia, you obviously are indemnified uh, going to our sites, our landfills. Uh, we also have closure, post-closure uh, letters of, of credit in place um, to support uh, any long-term needs at the site. And then probably the biggest thing really is uh, Veolia is backed by uh, $30.4 billion in, in revenue. Uh, so obviously we've got the assets and uh, the profitability and the ability to uh, long-term make sure we manage that landfill very successfully. Yep. 
I think I can. I got one more question, uh, Jim, before I think you can probably wrap it up. Okay. Um, somebody asked, what is the estimated tons per hour in the kiln? Boy, we can, I, I, I made the statement, we can, we can go through soil in a hurry, and we can, and uh, we can burn in excess of 30 tons an hour uh, in the incinerator of soil. Okay, so, great. Big volume. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Rob. And, and thank you, everybody, uh, for the questions um, and for attending. So uh, we really appreciate you putting up with our little bit of uh, technical difficulties at the beginning. Um, as I mentioned, uh, keep an eye on your email. We'll send uh, some follow-up material. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll also give you the contact information for Rob and Matt and also a gentleman by the name of Dave Arugio, uh, who is also one of our remediation experts. So that will tell you how to get in touch with us. Uh, consider joining us for our April 1st webinar on the EPA's, the latest with EPA's e-manifest system. And uh, at that point, I think uh, we can conclude the webinar. Thank you for attending. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And remember, Violi is now a landfill company. It's our number one goal. <laughs> everyone have a great day. Thank you.